10 seconds remaining. Hello everybody and welcome back. It is the final day of the international group stage and we have two very good series ahead of us. Both me and Draskal are going to be covering LGD versus TNC, which are going to be first series together. And then after that, we've got Virtus Pro versus IG. Both of these series are going to be uh, matches that kind of determine whether or not uh, at least one team is able to end up in the upper bracket. Currently, LGD are already locked into their upper bracket standing thanks to their groups of 10 and 4 score uh, while TNC sitting right on the line at 9 and 5 so they conceivably could lose this series and end up tying uh, to secret and potentially losing out on that upper bracket spot so TNC really need just to be able to pick up one win here in this series and they're going to start things off with a Night Stalker yeah and, and going back to what you said about the influencing of the group stage and seeing who makes it to the top, uh, being able to go through in that upper bracket. There's a game going on right now between Team Secret and Liquid where I, I don't want to spoil what's happening, but if Secret were to drop one game, they're, they're pretty much mathematically eliminated from being able to make it into yeah. the top. So this game, very important for TNC, as you already said. Opening, I would say we've been seeing a lot more Ancient Apparition. I would say maybe even almost standard at this point to, yeah. to open in the first two. The clockwork we've been seeing not quite as much, but out of TNC in particular, we know that Sam H plays it very, very well. And I think even Tim's has uh, played it once or twice for the team during the group stages. So mm -hmm. nothing really super crazy coming out of either team. I'm a little bit surprised they didn't go for the Naga Siren um, after that opening. Maybe it's like a little bit too much burst damage. You know, Earthshaker does his combo and you get an Ice Blast over the top and maybe that hero still dies, but... Um, TNC have been been doing pretty well with the Naga Siren, and they they're able to run it as both core and support. So it's like that that thing we we're talking about for EG's drafting, um, the ambiguity factor that they're able to bring to the table with some of these pickups. Here, TNC kind of solidify their picks, I think, pretty heavily. It's very likely we're going to be seeing a Night Stalker four position and off lane uh, Clockwork seems awkward to run these both as support right. or to put the Night Stalker as an off laner. That kind of leaves you wondering, how do they punish the Ancient Apparition? Because Clockwork inherently, he can kill the, the safe lane supports that don't have uh, an escape mechanism like Ancient Apparition, but you kind of have to wait for a misplay or something like mm -hmm. that, because Ancient Apparition with the new Ice Vortex, if he skills it by like level 3, which I assume you would, you have that kind of extra mobility now, and it's really hard for Clockwork to close that gap before level 6, and we haven't even seen what the safe lane of LGD is going to be. And going under the assumption that you said of it just being a clockwork off lane due to the Night Stalker already being picked up with it, it would seem likely that you can just counter pick the clockwork in lane and make it very difficult for him to even have, you know, experience at that point. You know, there's a lot of yeah. safe laners that do really well against clock and lane. Yeah, they could even have like one of those ranged, very self sufficient uh heroes or or maybe like the one on one heroes like the Ursa Lifestealer. They can go for like the Necrophos, for example, and you're just not really threatened by uh these heroes in laning phase. Uh, I guess not Necrophos here. Night Stalker, Clockwork, that's a bit too much magic damage. I'm comfortable with that. Uh, I guess TNC kind of looking at just like Clockwork. They, they feel so good about it versus Earthshaker and Ancient Apparition. They're, it's such a strong counter to the Earthshaker and uh, an easy kill on the AA when you do have that hook shot that it just like couldn't be let up, right? Like It's, it's going to reveal our strategy, but we think that it counters two heroes that they have in the pool, that's why. It's a lot about your picking philosophy and when you want each individual hero to be strong, right? So that during the laning phase, you might say, okay, we're sacking our clock a little bit, but as soon as he hits six, like you said, those two heroes are just free kills, pretty yeah. much. And depending on how much effectiveness the Night Stalker can get out of the map, like we don't know what the other support of LGD is. I guess we're kind of assuming offlane shaker at this point, just because it seems to be more common, I think, than the, the support role, even though we have seen it during the group stages. LGD following things up now with a puck, also a hero that we've been seeing in the offlane periodically, and most of the time I would say probably just still going mid because of how strong of a matchup he has versus most of the other heroes that are picked up now, because truthfully, you don't really see a heck of a lot of Lena anymore. 
And I think that was one of the heroes that became really troublesome for Puck because she can push the wave just as fast as you. And because of the things like Fire Assault, you can't really effectively trade either. Right. So one of the things that Puck likes to do is go in, get an auto attack or two off phase shift and run away. Lena can get more hits on you running away because she has more range, more attack speed, more movement speed. And it, it's like a really, really tough matchup. Almost, I would say even maybe it's just as bad as TA in some cases. Are TNC... No, they're not going to husk arm, right? Because Ancient Apparition or Shaker. Yeah, I thought with AA, I think it's nasty. very dangerous. So what what does combo with the Oracle? Or do you think TNC aren't even necessarily thinking about a com combo here, and they're just more looking at, like, we like Oracle versus Ancient Apparition. It kind of goes both ways, but I know some teams really like to be able to have that saving mechanism. I do like blast. DP Oracle a lot, but I think it's the same reasoning of why you wouldn't want to pick the Alchemist or the, the Huskar, because just AA destroys right. it super hard. The, the counter argument, I guess, for DP in particular is that you can buy pipe on that hero, and it's a it's someone who gets a, a good amount of farm. So you don't need to worry about, okay, how quick am I going to be able to get a pipe on like a support or an offlane hero? It's, this hero is just going to get farm. I'll have a really early pipe against a Puck, a Shaker, the, the AA, and now a Tidehunter, which is just... LGD are stacking their team fight. Yeah, they certainly are. An old 11 Tidehunter. I can't say it's... Uh, I've seen that recently but i think i like it just because i'm gonna guess that night stalker is gonna be playing with the clockwork a bit in this landing phase um maybe not in the beginning maybe not until four minute mark or something like that but at some point we're gonna have them kind of separate and oracle plus one does not feel like a very dangerous uh safe lane so your off laner can be a little bit greedier and Tidehunter, just his natural tankiness, is going to suit really well, uh, particularly Kraken Shell versus Oracle. Any high attack speed but low damage heroes are naturally hurt by uh, damage reduction the most. I'd say it depends on how many levels the Oracle gets, because you could just as easily say, once you get a few points into Purifying Flames, if you have a safe laner that offers damage, mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily have to be like this right-click hero, it can be Juggernaut, for example, or even if they did want to go back and, and say the Huskar, you can still just deal a truckload of damage by orb walking, and, and the Tidehunter will have to probably jungle at that point. It's going to be something a little bit more standard, though, getting the, the Sven. Once he gets BKB, it's a really solid Sven game. Yeah. Blink BKB, you know, your Mask of Madness, SOI, which, uh, whichever item progression you decide to go. Once you reach that point now, LGD are going to have to look at this and say, okay, do we just... I, I actually think what TNC do is a last ban troll, because... That's probably the go-to for the, yeah. the Sven counters right now. And I feel like LGD definitely have enough space creators with all this team fight that they have that it would be nice to be able to have just sort of that harder carry out there. Yeah. We'll see what TNC are scared of, though. And I didn't... Yeah, okay, I didn't miss the ban. I was like, maybe he already got banned and I just didn't notice. But yeah, he's still available. SF ban from LGD. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, like, SF, I feel like he wants something maybe a little bit more active, like uh, the, the Queen of Pain or something. But Slark. That's one that I was not expecting. I suppose, looking at TNC, they don't really have a lot of guaranteed catch for the hero. Split pushing makes it kind of dangerous, I think, mm -hmm. if you if you stretch it out too long. Because LGD are going to have insane team fight, And you need to find a way to pressure that and get map control and try to shut down potentially what a Slark could do. And once he gets like one or two items, it, it, it's very, very hard to track him down. And TNC are going to go ahead and end things up with another hero that could potentially buy Pipe, also a natural BKB carrier. Great scaling. Uh, I guess the the tower pushing is what they're they're most concerned with. And it's a hero that doesn't really, doesn't really get crushed by Ancient Apparition like the other healing mid, like we were talking about Death Prophet, for example, to, right. to partner with the Oracle. It's not really as hard of a counter. So a lot of armor, a lot of tankiness, a lot of natural resistance to physical damage. Uh, LGD, you go for some sort of magic damage carry, right? So... I mean, E-Blade combo is technically magic damage. Yeah. It's but gonna... more of a split pusher, right? That's kind of the, the idea behind it. Yeah, it's, it's the same philosophy as the Slark ban coming in from TNC. Just a hero that's difficult to lock down, not going to realistically be able to kill Ame once he gets to that... That Lincoln's E-Blade, you know, if he opts to go for BKB or Manta after the fact, it doesn't really matter because your reliable way to kill the hero is pretty much Night Stalker Silence mm -hmm. and hope that he doesn't get Morph off before you cast it. It's it's very, very unreliable at this point. So LGD putting themselves with the, 
I would say almost a pure four protect one, just given how strong the team fight of the other four members of LGD uh, are. And then you have TNC, who are a little bit more on the clock, want to be able to get that map control, want to be able to fight, waiting for their own BKB timings. And also seeing what Tim's on that, that Night Stalker during the early game in uh, 1437 can accomplish in the lanes. Because I'm looking at LGD and I'm thinking, these heroes don't move very much. You yeah. know, the, the puck is the only moving part really of LGD's entire lineup. The rest of them are just going to sit in their lanes. They're going to pull creeps. They're going to try to give Ame a good start. Whereas TNC, the Night Stalker, and Oracle combination, you don't really think about Oracle being that strong of a ganking hero, but he offers a lot of damage. That's what he offers. Like the burst of the Purifying Flames, Fortune's End combination is what allows you to get those kills, even on like one of the tankier offlaners such as Tide. So you're thinking like 10, 15, 20 minutes, like that's where TNC are going to be really strong with their clockwork, Night Stalker, getting a lot of picks. Uh, LGD won't be moving around uh, too much, so they won't be grouped up very often. But once we start getting like 25, 30, then LGD's like big team fight really starts coming into play. And then a little bit past that, the, the spin comes online at that point as well. I think so. Push. I also think that LGD are going to heavily prioritize their tier ones this game. When you have something like a Morphling who requires just, like you said, that 25 to 30 minutes of just quiet farming, maybe he gets a, a kill or two in his lane, you're not really sure how it's going to play out just yet because it is a, a clockwork. Mm -hmm. Kind of difficult to kill, I think, for that hero pairing. But yeah, I, I think it's just going to be LGD playing it safe. You know, get your ultimates up. If TNC threaten a tower, you can always defend because you just have this ridiculous team fight combination once your heroes hit six. I like this choice from Sam H to go for the boots first uh, against the Morphling and Ancient Apparition. I think the, the movement speed advantage against the Ancient Apparition is really important for you to actually get on top of them and potentially get a kill against that squishy support since the Ice Vortex change. Um, and then the other one is the, the fact that if he goes for the earlier set of cogs, um, he could just go and, and really batter the Morphling with cogs. That's really the only way you could threaten that carry, right? It's just burn out his man. I would even say an automatic Morphling could be ganked by the Night Stalker too. Yeah. If he doesn't have enough to morph, like what is an Ancient Apparition going to do to stop the dive? If Victoria is there, then sure, the defensive fissure can kind of stop that aggression. But then you're saying, okay, two heroes are pulling the attention of three. And that's the, the advantage to TNC, I feel. Tim's is going to go for an early smoke up, but I don't, I'm not sure exactly what the timing... Uh, oh, it was a... Uh, he had a ward. A, it was yeah. a ward or a courier attempt, right? Like he was going to go and... Oh, yeah, courier slash ward. One. Yeah. yeah. Nice positioning there from Victoria. And even though his smoke got revealed, he doesn't really have the information of the ward being placed on the high ground. He can only really assume. Tidehunter. Old Eleven is going to be face death hands, 1437's Oracle, and Raven's Sven. Should be able to do pretty well in this lane. You could already see TNC really trying to pressure the Tide Hunter as soon as possible, but he does have those extra set of tankos. They're going to go for and try and see if they can block him in, but just gets another treat. He will be okay. Mid lane, uh, Cuckoo's actually very low, but so is maybe. They're going to be able to get the Fissure onto two. Maybe gets far enough away to get some healing salve time. The Void is looking to be able to cut that uh, healing salve down to half and does kind of ruin some of the regen, but Cuckoo's also still staying quite low. He does not have a healing salve. He's just going to have to slowly regen through tables. Since he did go for the... Oh, oh no! He's just going to get popped! He got so greedy, Cuckoo! Sticking around in lane like that with only the breathe fire. He might have assumed that maybe didn't skill silence at level two, I guess. It really depends. But if you if you hit that level and you go for the all in, it can definitely catch you off guard. I think that's kind of what happened there when, yeah. uh, when they got the first blood. Still, nonetheless, nice play from maybe the uh, clutch skill up into a kill. Earth Shakers. Still going to be chilling around the mid lane. I know they got that first blood. Tim's is going to be playing that roaming four position Night Stalker that looks to catch the Ancient Apparition as often as possible, and it looks like they just caught him. The boy just slow him down, and Sam H stands on top of him, not even needing the cogs. Hold on to that extra mana. They claim the kill. He knew he was dead to rights as soon as he got hit by like the first void. Yeah. Not really much the AA can do about that. In that sense, even just having the, the Night Stalker kind of sitting bottom is still going to apply a lot of pressure to Ame. And I think that Tim's is going to be spending the majority of his time, you know, collecting the bounty runes, walking back and forth. If for whatever reason, Sam H and Tim's are both at, you know, LGD's bounty in the bottom forest, and Yao is there, 
it, he's just dead. And yeah. I think that's one of the only real reliable ways of getting experience and gold that he has right now, because even pulling is dangerous against, you know, not knowing where the Night Stalker is. Sure. They get a lot of damage on Cuckoo. This is really played out well by LGD. Victoria goes for something that was pretty important, the preemptive enchant totem. Then hits the Fisher Flock, gets that big amount of physical damage in, and I think just that extra hit was enough for them to be able to bring down Cuckoo again in the mid lane. I seem to see a lot of Dragon Knight versus Puck matchups at this TI, and the Dragon Knight just loses because of just getting ganked so much. Like everyone runs to this hero's lane, they try to punish him super hard, and normally you think, this guy's so tanky, how are you going to kill him? But they always manage to set it up. Poor Ancient Apparition. Yao did manage to finally find the ward that was blocking his easy camp, and it's pretty important, right? The Ancient Apparition, despite facing up against Clockwork and Night Stalker, he can't just sit AFK behind Ame and lane constantly. Oh, this is going to be a good opportunity. The fish block. Actually, Fisher doesn't land. He still managed to get the Cold Feet locked down there. Meanwhile, at top lane, we missed the Night Stalker wrapping around behind the Tight Hunter. Got TNC to kill. This is kind of what we were speaking to as well, needing that magical damage to take down Old Eleven on that Tide. The Sven is skilling up stun. Raven is not going for the, you know, the extra point into Warcry. He's not going for the Great Cleave. He just really wants to punish the Tide Hunter, knowing that it is really hard, I think, in this case for Old Eleven to, to not show in lane because then it's nighttime. You know, Tim's is going to be running around the map. If you're not showing in lane, you're not applying pressure to the safe laner, then Tim's can pretty much go wherever he wants. That was perfect. The fact that Tim's took that bounty rune because he's going to be able to get his own bounty rune and the Dire Jungle, and that gives him level 3. That, that's the real feel-good moment right there, right? If you can get, as a roaming Night Stalker, you can get level 3 by minute 4, then you just hit this huge power spike. Whether you get the extra level in Void or you need the Silence, either one is a, a big oh, boon to Old you. 11, you are, you are in there. Far, and they go for the extra level in Void, and they're going to be able to slow him down. They just can stun him and hold him in place for so long. Now, Old 11 does mitigate a lot of the damage now that he's level 4. Bottom line, looks like they managed to catch Sam H. Every single time I look to one of these side lanes, the kill attempt is a failure. But mid, we're going to see Cuckoo go by Victoria here. Turns around, managed to get the Dragon Tail stun. But an orb does manage to land on Cuckoo. But the bottle heal is keeping him alive. So maybe his dive is not going to work out for him. Sam H actually teeping to the tier 2. But no boots on maybe means he is going to be caught by this battery. Salt has the orb up, though. So he's not going to be dying to this. Sam H. He went for the extra level in Power Cox. Actually trying to stay on top of maybe because Tim's is coming over. Now Victoria's going to be able to get the Fisher onto Tim's. But he's going to fly right over the cliff. Going to be able to get the Voids here. But no, actually doesn't even go for it. He's going to be face shift or dodged. And they get on top of the shrine. So happy days for LGD. So much movement coming out from TNC in the early part of the game. Expected though, just given the, the hero combination that they have. And this is all done without the use of maybe having the Dream Coil. Once that comes online, you're going to be seeing even more aggression. Might even see him TP to another lane to try to relieve perhaps uh, Old Eleven, who, you know, despite everything, he's died still sitting at 21 CS. Not too bad at all. Sam H just keeps on trying to get the cogs burned because he did put an extra level on that. We saw that uh, yesterday, didn't we, with uh, a clockwork that had a Keeper of the Light on his team? Yeah. Felt like he didn't need the Rocket Flare. Yeah, he, he was going for, like, the mass mana burn and... To be honest, if you max Cogs and Battery, you have the highest 1v1 kill potential. Yeah. Because it takes the extra hit to kill the Cogs, they last longer. It's a very good way to make sure that heroes like Ancient Apparition and Earthshaker just straight up die to you when you initiate. Sure. You even get the damage oftentimes, you know. The hero does kill the Cogs after three hits, but he runs out of the Cogs yeah, and gets yeah. burned by it. It's a wealthy amount of damage at level 4. Tim's at Victoria. Having that little bump in the night. Night Stalker's right next to him. Do uh, Night Stalker spotted Victoria on the side here, and I think, yeah, Victoria just spotted Tim's as well. well. Nothing should come of this two on two. Cuckoo's just gonna try and get some damage. A little bit of chip here and there off of his reverse dragon form. Taking quite a while to hit level six on the puck. You know, Cuckoo's actually a full level ahead, we say that though. They're gonna try for this kill, even though he does have a haste rune in his bottle, and they knew about it too. That is gonna be a coil completely wasted. Top lane, old 11 against God's strength. You're not gonna be able to stop that amount of damage, though. They do manage to kill the Tide Hunter. Like, 
again. Really doing a great job because the Tidehunter, once he starts getting level 7, level 8, he really becomes that unkillable territory. So I love the fact that they're putting so much pressure on him early since it is such a farmy offlaner. It's not one that gets level 6 and moves around like Sam H's clockwork. There is another really strong point too when we're talking about the Tide is that there's no ancient stacks for him. A lot of the time when you have these supports that kind of just sit behind a lane, when you have this downtime, you go and you stack something because you're not really rotating around and looking for kills so much. You're just trying to prevent aggression. Sure. So like Victoria hasn't really been able to accomplish any of the stacking for the Tide, which a lot of the times can propel you from having kind of a rough lane to, you know, maybe you get your full arcane boots and that just, you know, makes you accelerate your own farm more and more. Two man smoke gank during daytime. Smoke ganks are always awkward against Night Stalker, you know? Because most teams like to be able to smoke during nighttime, the less vision really helps. They're going to try and go on to Tim's here, it's just not going to work. Uh, old 11. <laughs> Threatening to cut through the trees, but LGD, there's no way you catch them. So they give up, just going to farm. I think it's strange that they made that rotation without the Tidehunter actually being 6. I mean, he, hit, he yeah. hits it now, so maybe they're trying to go for a timing. does uh, have an Iron Talon queued up in his inventory. Knows he's going to have to spend a lot of time in the jungle. Cuckoo is going to be caught by another Dream Quell. Fisher goes out, but there is going to be a small little save there from the Oracle from some magic damage, but they just pulled off throughout the nukes later. As DK is just getting abused in the mid lane. With the, the deaths that he has, though, Cuckoo still managed to get a little bit of a CS lead over the puck, and it's a lot of commitment every single time. You know, they're sending Three heroes mid, Sam H is getting some EXP, just hits level 6 now. With Hookshot available, Yao and Victoria have to be incredibly careful. Because it is so easy for Sam H to just wreak havoc on those two supports during this stage in the game. Victoria is not moving from this spot. He's not going to let Raven clear through that stack. So he does place down a ward. He's just trying to get some EXP, man. Yeah. He's that 6. Nice steal nuisance to what he is. Uh, meanwhile, though, we, we talked about like the potential of burning out the Morphling's mana. Maybe Night Stalker comes across or something like that, but they haven't actually really stopped Ame from doing anything. He's sitting at top of the net worth chart, 4,400. They, they kind of said the Night Stalker bought him, what, the one time when they killed Yao? And then other than that, Tim's has been pretty much claiming the enemy offlane bounty rune, his own bounty, making some rotations uh, towards the mid lane to try to help counter pressure. So he's stunned here. Uh, they are going to be able to catch Old Eleven, while at the same time they are going to be diving 1437. They blow up him uh, back over to Old Eleven, chased down by the battery assault. These are both guaranteed kills for each side, but obviously TNC get a little bit of better one there in killing the offlaner. Tim's going to be caught here underneath the tower, but he does have Cuckoo coming in, does manage to get a stun off, but after the Fisher, but I don't think it matters. Victoria can't get out of here very quickly, so mass rotations from TNC, but with the Dragon form used, it's kind of okay. You may have rotated a lot of heroes, but they can try and put some pressure on the mid tower. It's Ame is doing the same here against the offlane tower of TNC. I uh, should be dropping here, depending on how aggressive Sam H wants to play this. I think in the next wave or two, can just walk in and get it. By the way, the Sam H, he decided to just go for like casual two points into cogs, and then only has double battery. I mean, I guess, I suppose it's a moot point since he'll be hitting level 7 so soon, but it'll Cuckoo lane again. Goes for the tower, but they bait it out with the cliff. They're just holding Cuckoo there. They are going to be able to get the Oracle safe here, so hold. Cuckoo managed to get the last hit onto the tower. Let's see if he can escape. I'm not sure how much uh, healing he's really going to be able to get out of this one. The Ravage does manage to hit him. It is full commitment from LGD to shut down that Dragonite again. Top lane, Yao. He did. He's very dead. Raven. Wraps around. Pretty cool play from, from Raven there, wrapping around like that, being able to kill the support. And with his god strength, he can hit the tower if he wants to, but he's actually TP'd over to start doing his ancient stack with that god strength. Mass efficiency. Yeah, I like this. It, I, especially considering the fact that you know that Ravage was just used, so it's going to be really hard for LGD to contest you yeah. while you're doing this. You've got your shrine up, you know, everything's looking good. Another coil. Tim. 1437 doesn't have the save, but Sam H just might with the cogs onto two with the battery salt going in. But all these heroes are so damn tanky with the lower level of battery salt. It's not going to be very easy for him to cut any of them down to size. So all of LGD will remain healthy. We do save the Night Stalker's life in the process. 
Got the super efficient uh, shrine usage though from TNC, followed by a smoke. No hook yet though. Yeah, without the hook, they're completely riding on Timsy, able to get the silence off, but he does manage to get it. Slows down maybe. The silence isn't going to last very long, but long enough for the stun to be able to land, and the cogs push back for the extra bit of hold. Six to seven, 12 and a half minutes in, TNC with a very slight lead, but Ame grows bigger and bigger. This is kind of what TNC need to do, though, at the same time. If they're not applying pressure all the time, then you're just letting the Morphling get free farm. And in the ultra late game stages, it's it's pretty tough, I think, for a Sven to deal with Morph just because of his mobility. He's a natural Lincoln's carrier, and you realistically only have, you know, two spells that can break it. You eventually build into the Bloodthorn, which is way later, and then you have your Storm Hammer, which is a projectile, very easy to dodge. So I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, LGD currently have a lead in net worth even though they don't have their mid tier 1 tower anymore, they can still just contest every single tier 1 as long as they have some ultimates. So you think TNT need to really start running at Ame, especially with this Blink Dagger? I think Raven has a pretty good chance of chunking him down with just like one extra hero. It'd be pre, uh, pre cast cost strength. Yeah, it's possible to kill him. They needed the silence off really early though. Yeah. Raven stands and fights. He does have some heroes behind him, but the Ancient Apparatus and Ice Blast is going to be able to come in and bump back Raven. They do manage to get the save for 14.37, so he turns on old 11, trying to finish him off. The Ravage isn't up for two more seconds. They're trying to finish him off before the Ravage can go down, but he gets it off just in time, and Sven explodes, so they'll get 14.37 as well. Value plays here from LGD. Ame is still full HP, so he'll just keep on whacking on that tier one tower. And the rest of TNC's rotating heroes are just going to be here a bit too late. Maybe they can kill like a support like Yao as they run right on top of him as they round the corner. But nothing to really threaten Ame. He's going to take that tower, run to the trees, and be fine. He doesn't I don't think he... Well, they don't have mana. Yeah, neither one of them have mana. Okay, he is yeah. fine. That was very fortunate that Yao tanked that gank, essentially made TNC use all of their mana so that there was nothing left to interrupt the, the teleport cast. So I guess all is well that ends well for LGD. They get a tier one tower, they kill the Sven, they get out with Ame not dying. That, that was probably everything you could have asked for. Victoria thinking about the four staff first for the support Earthshaker, seeing as the uh, clockwork such a problem for him and his other support, so. Yeah, it's super good, this game. Even if you just get Nightstalker silenced or voided or something, you, you as Earthshaker, you're not really that mobile. So, you get hit by a spell or two, or you want to save your Morphling if he's silenced inside of a Cogs. It's just a, a very value kind of thing. And it plays into their strategy as well. You're not really looking to make plays right now, I think, as Victoria. You're more than anything just looking to sit back, throw out a defensive fissure to make sure that you know, Raven with his uh, newly acquired Blank Dagger and Mask of Madness and a follow-up hook or something like that doesn't just demolish one of your teammates. You just need to save them and buy time. And it's not like they need a whole lot of initiation. Uh, maybe he's going to be able to make him for it pretty soon. That's gold. He'll have a Blink Dagger. Tidehunter is oftentimes going to be on the front lines. A big AoE stun. So there's plenty of things that uh, can set up initiations for LGD that don't require that fast Blink combo. 8-8, eight to eight, but LGD are looking to be pretty far ahead right now. Even though it's just, uh, as you were kind of saying, like only a 1k gold lead, it just looks better game-wise for them. It's just difficult for TNC to pressure. And uh, as a game where the later it goes, the more you favor LGD is 1437 is in the wrong neighborhood. <laughs> he has been spotted. You know, it's called the Dire Jungle, but at this point in the game, it's really not Dire's at all. Between uh, the two teams, both finding it a whole lot easier to invade the opposing jungle. It just kind of switches sides. So TNC, they kind of own the Radiant jungle and vice versa. He did get a pretty decent amount of information, realizing that LGD are going to be committing to that push. Say that one TP back, Yao doesn't have his ultimate for about another 10 seconds. I wonder if they'll be able to hold this. Sam H. Oh, holding on to the Ravage there. Do manage to get the stun off and a quick retreat here from TNC. Now, Sam H is still looking for the pick here. It's maybe he's going to be able to catch Cuckoo. And they have the Ravage. They're going to let it go here. Manage to catch a lot of different heroes, but the Oracle saves Cuckoo's life. Manage to get the stun on a maybe, but at the same time, the clockwork his initiation goes a little awry as he managed to kill the Ancient Ash, but not enough. Ray Man fights against Victoria, but he's surrounded by too many heroes. They're going to try and still run down Victoria with Tim's and has this flying vision to be able to catch the hero, but it may just cost him his life. The extra movement speed is going to be needed here to stay ahead of maybe. Who has the orb? It's a little bit more vision. Goes nice. for a nice silence TP out. That's 
Smart play there from Tim's, but a nasty team fight for TNC, losing four and only killing two. It's very rough right now because the Sven doesn't have BKB yet. So Raven, he's trying to push with his team because they realize that there is always an objective that needs to be taken when you're playing against this kind of morphling mass AoE team fight lineup. So he's there and he's he's trying to hit stuff and it's just not happening. He got solo echoed there by Victoria, got chain stunned. His team can't really do anything for him because at that point Sam H had already committed onto Yao and then we saw a waveform into the cogs and ended up saving uh, Yao for a good amount of time, allowed him to get off the last chilling touch. And because of that extra magical damage, they're able to just kind of chew through the, the Sven. So very nice team fight coming in for LGD. TNC once again maybe feeling like they should do something though because they know Ravage is down and so is Echo for the time being. Well, I hope that Fountain Rune was worth it. It really wasn't. The amount of money that he gives away, and this is, I think, going back to what you said about how LGD kind of just look like they're in a better spot. If you are in a game where you know that your late game is going to be superior and you are very close in regards to net worth, trades always benefit you because even killing a hero like the Night Stalker is going to give you a fair amount of golden experience. If you're like super far behind, it's even better if you're that team who has the, the late game and, and takes a, a successful fight. Yeah. It's very difficult, I think, for TNC, given their the way they want to fight, to really do anything until BKB comes out on Raven. I think that is just a necessity at this point. Do you think Cuckoo should go straight for the BKB here or the, the Shadow Blade? Uh, I think the Shadow Blade is better because it helps you scale. And having the Blink Dagger is great, don't get me wrong, but the heroes that you really want to try to kill, I think are like the, the Tidehunter first, and without a Silver Edge, good luck. Nice Blast, and Puck combination with the Earthshaker here too. Quick execution of the Sven by LGD. He just exploded. Yeah. That was just a ton of damage. The Veil synergy on this team is, is huge as well. I have the Ancient Apparition, the, the Puck full combo, Earthshaker spells. Eventually, the E-Blade coming out on Ame. He's got two or 2,100 gold, and he's already got the Ghost Scepter for his E-Blade. Th that is just going to be any hero is dead if the Fates Edict isn't perfectly on point. And you're already sitting at an extra 55%, or a decreasing magic resistance by 55% between Veil and then if they get the maxed out uh, Ice Vortex. Yeah, that as well. <laughs> They're just going to... You can't get enough armor. That's the... It, like yeah. You need magic immunity, and someone needs a pipe. I think Tim's is building it. Yeah, he's got the the pipe on his quick buy. It's going to be a huge value item this game. Kind of surprised that they ended up going for the, the Arma build on Cuckoo against an Ancient Apparition, because it doesn't really provide you much survivability if you get chunked by the Ice Blast. I was kind of thinking, like, maybe he just goes the Eternal Envy route, you know, just buy that pipe first item. Let's go. Yeah. It's so good against their team, it's actually, I think, worth it in yeah, some cases. Yeah, they're all in on the magic damage. A four-man smoke up behind Cuckoo's Dragonite, but the smoke is going to pop. They see Yao. They're going to try and catch him here, but they're now fully committed. Good hook shot onto Victoria, locking down that Earthshaker is his first priority, but the four stuff does manage to get him outside of the cogs. Oh, the 11. Well, they move forward and do manage to kill maybe Puck. Tim's meanwhile going to be chased down, hit by the Echo Slam. Looks like they're going to be able to lock him down long enough to get that kill, while Old Eleven looks to zone the rest of TNC from chasing as he does have that Ravage. Sam H was doing a little bit of battle from Ame. When we say battle, he really just was being a big old punching bag. Four staff forward, Old Eleven doesn't have enough mobility to catch TNC on their way back. Victoria does. He actually is the one with the blink dagger. Who had the force to? Oh, was that Tide the Tide Hunter? Yeah, attack. they swapped their itemization. So what nice. I thought they would do is just go for mech on uh, old eleven, and then just have the shaker by force anyway, because it makes your five man just that much better. Right. But if you have someone else with a force, you might as well buy blink, because if you're playing at this level and you have the the faith in your teammates to save you, you can just skip it. Yeah, honestly, the the blink's not needed on Tide so much, right? Like he's just he sits so far in the oh, oh my god. god, that's so much magic damage. Raven, he almost dies to that one, but they do manage to get the Oracle save. So Raven's going to go over to the Shrine during this False Promise timing, while Sam H does manage to lock down the Earthshaker. Another four staff out of that one, plus the Ravage is going to be able to catch Cuckoo with the Ice Blast over the top. It protects him against the magic damage, but it still cuts him down. And now, with that armlet toggle, he ends up dying. Sam H, he's trying to get away, but uh, okay, Cogs push back, maybe. I don't think you really want to chase this one. LGD have already done enough damage, and TNT is going to be able to come back here with Raven with the God Strength to cut down the support, but they need cores here so badly. Raven's just swinging through the creep wave. They are going to be able to chase down Old Eleven. He's got the four staff, but I think he's just dead. 
LGD is just going to leave him behind. I like, really like that play for the Force Staff, but they still have the Blink Dagger on Raven to keep up. That will be BKB for Raven off of those kills. So that fight, it looked a little nasty for LGD in the beginning. Or, sorry, sorry, it looked a little nasty for TNC in the beginning. But they managed to clean up a couple kills in the end, and it gets them that BKB, so they hit their big mid-game time. It's what they need, for sure. Raven being able to just freely hit inside of the team fight is the best possible scenario for any Sven team, really. And a lot of the time, you have another hero who just kind of locks somebody down for you. Think, think of things like Batrider. They drag the target to a melee core, and the melee core just beats it to death. This time, it's a little bit hard because the hero that does that for him is Clock. And Clock doesn't have a ton of inherent synergy because of cogs. Like, you want a cog to keep the hero still, but it also keeps Raven out. By having the BKB, this kind of eliminates that issue of him needing someone else on his team to set somebody up for him to hit. And now, LGD still looking to be in a pretty good position. Just really, really depends on the BKB reveal of Raven and what it can do. So this combination actually goes down to minus 95% magic resistance. If they get all the things, the Theria Blade, Veil, and the Ice Vortex all on top of the hero. Just any simple nuke is going to do so much damage. Ame, they're looking at him, looking at him pretty hard, but uh, having the Lincolns kind of kills Sven's entire initiation. You alluded to that much earlier in the game, and we're seeing that problem now for TNC, that they just need so many heroes to be able to bring more flink down. He needs that Bloodthorn. That's, that's the big thing. Yeah. I think it's kind of hard for Sven to justify buying any more than just that, though. Because if you really want to break Lincolns and kill the Morphling, you need another item, too, on top of that. So, like a Halberd or something, just as an example. To be able to break the Lincolns, apply the Bloodthorn, and stun simultaneously. But you can't really afford to commit that many inventory slots. In the meantime, LGD, looking at Roche, it will be scouted out here. Shadowblade Cuckoo on its way. It's going to be far too late. To contest Roshan, LGD will grab the Aegis for Ame, and now they push forward. They're going to be able to catch a couple of heroes now. Cuckoo goes straight for Yao, going to be able to take away that Ice Blast. Well, Raven takes the other support out of the pool. He goes for Victoria. Echo Slam does manage to go off, so Cuckoo's going to take a lot of oh the damage. He's just blown up by the shotgun, but Raven's still going strong with the BKB, but they really need him to be able to finish off some of these cores. They're just so tanky, though. 1437 does finally use the False Promise on him. Sam H managed to finish off the closing off laner, but he's going to be chased down by the other two cores of LGD, maybe, and Ame, and on top of Sam H and TNC, despite having plenty of heroes still alive, could do nothing to stop their core from dying. That Ravage was so good. It hit everyone. It hit everyone like on the very edge in different directions in the team fight. Like obviously during that point, Raven had his BKB on. But crazy thing about Anchor Smash, goes through BKB. Also still applies the damage debuff, which did hit Raven at some point. So Ame standing there, being the one who takes the brunt of Raven's God Strength attacks with that Anchor Smash debuff. You know, when they changed it to give strength and not just like straight up damage, that makes Anchor Smash better against God Strength because strength gives you base damage and Anchor Smash reduces only base damage. So it's uh, not something you think about too much, but it's, uh, every little bit helps when you're trying to live through that onslaught of a, a BKB Sven. Yeah, it's like that interesting Timber Saw Sven reaction. You know, yeah. it's the same sort of thing. Reducing damage output is very, very nice. And just because you know, you have that BKB, you feel kind of like invincible as Sven mm -hmm. at that stage, because that's your 10 second BKB. That's the point where you're like, all right, let's go. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna kill everyone. He spent so much time hitting the Morphling that he really couldn't get anything done. And even on top of that, the E-Blade plays more into countering the Sven, because if you E-Blade the person he goes on, like what does he do during that duration? Like he has to change targets, you know, maybe there's no one else nearby to hit, it can be very tricky. It does feel like there's just way too many kiting mechanisms for a Sven to be successful. All three of the cores are too hard to kill in some way. Puck is super elusive, Tidehunter is super tanky, and he has Anchor Smash, and Ame is just super hard to kill no matter what, plus he has Aegis. So TNC really need a much stronger initiation. The last one was pretty good too. They instantly blow up the Ancient Apparition, just like we see 1437. It's blown up by LGD. But they took out two supports, like, near instantly in the fight. Yeah, that it, it just, again, Old Eleven's Ravage was too good. Like, he hit every single hero that he could, you know, feasibly hit. <laughs> and poor Dragon Knight! It was like at half HP when he got hit by that shotgun. Yeah. You get Veil on him at that point in time. That's the only way that makes sense. Now, this is looking to be a pretty scary timing. They still have Ravage off cooldown. Old Eleven's just going to walk up to the high ground and be like, come at me, dude. 
TNC, how do they stop this push? I, I'm honestly, I'm very surprised that Ame's backing up. Because with that Aegis and the double Lincolns. Oh, he didn't. Oh, he did replicate. Never mind. I was going to say, I, I didn't see where it was, but it's in the middle lane. So I think he just wants to keep all the lanes pushed in as, as much as possible. Because again, looking at TNC, and we spoke a little bit about this during the draft, not really a lot of wave clear. Yeah. So once the lanes are in, they're pretty much just going to stay in. And I think LGD realized this and say, hey, look, if you have top and mid pushing in with us all being bottom, you can't really kill the creep wave fast enough. They're going to get chip damage on the tier 3 every single time someone leaves to go deep push another lane. There's no rush on using this Aegis. Still got plenty of time. Ami jumps forward. Here comes that magic damage. Fortunately, the Shadow Blade and the Force Staff will manage to get him out. Now, maybe does not have an orb to defend himself here, but they are going to throw down their Ravage. Managed to catch three heroes on the back line, so Sam H is just dead and has no buyback. But the Ravage being used, LGD. We'll see how comfortable they feel continuing to force this situation. They shouldn't feel too scared, to be honest. Yeah, with double link, it's on it's just kind of unkillable. Then even if they do manage to catch him, Tim Finn's come in. Oh, they blow him up already, but Raven with the BKB goes for all the 11, but that's a Ravageless-ness Tidehunter. That doesn't really do a whole lot. He needs to be able to bring down some of the other cores. Fortunately, they do manage to take down Ame, but that's just life number one. And they actually kill him another round here. Raven doesn't actually have any mana, neither does Cuckoo. These guys are just always manaless. They have really, really low mana pools. That's one of the issues with the heroes in general. And that's why I think Blood, uh, Bloodthorn just fits Sven so well. You just get that mana pool increase, you're regening all the time. It just feels so good yeah. to have one item in your inventory like that, even if it's, you know, some random item that gives you regen. Like Lincoln's, we see a lot of Sven's picking that one up as well. But still a defense, nonetheless. I, I think Ame still had time to defensively E-Blade against the Sven that was going in on his Tide, but maybe he just didn't figure like it was worth it because he already had expended Ravage anyway. And he wanted to just try to save it for a, a potential kill instead. But TNC buying themselves time, getting towards that Bloodthorn, that is a huge item. That is the item that basically says, I'm killing whoever I go on unless you physically stop me from doing it. So talking about that Bloodthorn, LGD have obviously kind of owned the timing that we thought TNC and their strategy should have been the most successful. We're going to go into plan B for TNC, which is going late game against the Morphe. What do you give their chances to actually pull a win out in this game? It's all going to be down to Raven. And I, what I mean by that is, does he get the, the lucky cleaves? Does he get the, the one like three-man storm hammer into a couple of cleaves and just instant crits, everyone dies? But that's like the it sounds X. pretty likely. That, that's likely. the X factor, right? The, yeah. the, that, but that's what Sven always does because you get to a stage in the game where you feel like, okay, I have so much farm, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill everyone. But if they're all spread out, your, your God Strength Mask of Madness BKB is really only gonna kill like one hero, and then after that, you've kind of expended most of what you're gonna be doing during the fight. You just need the one, one good initiation where maybe LGD are moving around with the smoke and they get revealed and they're too clumped up or something like that. And that that's the fight that TNC are going to look at and just be like, boom, three or four heroes dead right away because of the Sven. I think that's going to be the most likely way they're going to they're going to win because it's too hard to push out the lanes. You can see that TNC's positioning right now. They're showing pretty much nobody on the map at all. I mean, LGD aren't either, but LGD are the ones I think who have the easier time pushing lanes. They have the mobility of the Morphling. He can replicate, bot to somewhere, push a lane, come back. He's not easy to kill. Whereas they've shown time and time again they can kill Raven. That's not a problem. Certainly. They do manage to get a successful scan on the Morphling as he now shows himself. Radiant scan inside the base is actually going to miss. So because they, they can scan inside the base, they may feel uh, a little bit uncomfortable with Ame being out here by himself. Looks like he's kind of baiting his positioning. Not quite yet, but his, his team kind of wraps through the jungle. Maybe he'll push out a little bit further, but they're still looking towards mid. This would be a really fortuitous engagement for TNC solely because they have so much vision around where they are right now. Yeah. This is another really good way to take team fights if you're behind. Just play around where your wards are instead of trying to do some some crazy smoke into no vision. But LGD are not going to be denied. They're going to force them back. Get some damage onto that tier three. TNC 
I'll manage to TP back here. But just a couple of seconds there. Oh, an aggressive force snap onto Tim's. May have just found an opening, but they force it. They're going to jump forward onto Ame, but he managed to get a defensive force snap away from that one. So now Raven just has to hit on Old Eleven, but he just doesn't do enough damage. So TNC are now caught outside of their base, the last place they wanted to have a team fight. Sam H, he's going to be the one who ends up going down for that. Great setup there from, I think, Old Eleven was the one who used the uh, force yeah. snap on Tim's. That was a really clutch play. Kind of forcing TNC to feel like they had to commit. When in reality, the best thing you can do in that situation is just watch the watch the Tim's Night Stalker just die. Pop the Lincoln. We still have maybe Lincolns to throw over to the Markling if he ever gets in trouble. But honestly, what trouble can there be with God Strength down? 35 seconds. There's no way TNC can actually fight. Oh, Kuko has to going to pop out immediately get tackled. Slam 1437 is going to be able to get off the false promise. And looks like they'll be able to kill Victoria with that one. So killing the back line, that's what they kind of can do. They can kill supports with this Dragonite. But the other cores are just not going to go down easy, especially as Kuku's going to be jumped on once again. Try to save him from the magic damage. Not going to be enough. Raven actually underneath the shrine goes for TP out, but the damage is too much. They overwhelm his HP pool, and TNC are going to have to fight again. Four versus five, a pushback there with the cogs. But he jumps away to his replicate. So maybe it's just going to be old 11 who dies. TNT are going to be able to catch him. Pop of the God Strike just to make this easier. But again, LGD are fine with Tidehunter dying, especially when it's after Ravage. They've already fully disengaged. They took the tier three, they took the melee racks. They are very happy with their position in this game. TNC are kind of being exploited in the way that they need to take fights. The Clockwork is such a heavy committal hero when you go in. If I don't get my kill when I hook, and I don't have an escape item. Like, there's no four staff on Samage. He built for more of the, I want to utilize my effective health pool and, and get blade mail and, and try to kill heroes that way, which is fine. But I just look at the difference in how Samage has to play the game and, and how easy it is for the Tide Hunter, Old Eleven, just to walk up behind his team, just stand there, and he pressures just by existing, right? It, it's such a difference in, in play style, and TNC with the inability to push waves, they can't force LGD apart. They can't make them, you know, TP to a tier 3 or a tier 2 when they're pressuring your heck, even a tier 1, I guess, because LGD's offlane tower is still alive in a 35-minute game. There's just not really a whole lot of avenues of play that TNC currently have that allow them to directly pressure LGD, LGD other than just straight up fighting. And if you try to fight LGD's lineup, it's really hard. They desperately need that Bloodthorn. Solar Crest is going to help out a lot, too. <laughs> they kind of need that minus armor on whatever hero Sven is hitting, because he, it, this is just not the Sven that we've seen in a lot of the group stage. It's not a one, two, three, you're dead Sven, right? Because oftentimes he's like hitting Morphling, who's super tanky, one way or another, either has high armor or really high HP. He's hitting the Tidehunter, who's sitting at what? 2,000 HP plus the Solar Crest of Zone. Yeah, there's no easy targets. That's the biggest issue. And because of the way that the fights go, once LGD are kind of grouping up, this is something big that I think has been a theme throughout the tournaments. Anytime there's a lineup that is really good at sieging and kind of just sitting there, if you allow them to get in position first before you do anything to stop them, then the fight becomes like 10 times harder. And then you're relying on someone else on your team being able to be somewhere else on the map, doing something, pushing a wave, creating some kind of pressure or chaos that LGD would have to deal with in this case. But you can see how scared they are. Like, Ame just fearlessly teleports to the bottom lane. There's two heroes here. All right, they're going to try for it. They managed to get the Storm Hammer onto the creeps, the stun onto Ame. But uh, I think he hit the Silence, got blocked by the Lincolns, and then the Void actually landed. Yeah. So that is not the one-two punch he wanted. He wanted it the other way around. Yeah, he didn't even have to buy Manta. They're just going to get this tier three. All 11 sitting in the front line like a boss. Echo Slam on a Cuckoo with the Ice Blast coming in. The Ravage as well. Raven does manage to pop his BKB first, but it, they're all out of control. So Raven's just going to be slowed down by the Scotty, chipped away, and TNC will call it for game number one. That was a clinic put on by LGD, really. I never felt like at any stage TNC, maybe barring like the first five to ten minutes of the game, had real opportunities to deal substantial damage to... LGD's lineup. They, yeah. they just always were defending towers. We talked about that. LGD really just needed to teleport wherever there was pressure and just stop it. 
It doesn't matter if you lose a hero here and there. Yao died a handful of times during the early game. Still got his level 6. Was able to contribute to the fights. And even though in lane he might not have contributed a whole lot, what he offers in team fight is invaluable. Against heroes like DK, these, these tanky strength heroes, being able to just flat out kill them with an Ice Blast inside of a combo having the Tidehunter and the Puck together. It was way too much for TNC. They, they couldn't push the waves fast enough, they couldn't gank fast enough, they couldn't keep applying the pressure to kind of make LGD crumble. Now, I'm not sure what's happened with that secret liquid game. It does also depend on that, but TNC really could just use the win here. I'm sure it's a confidence thing. I'm sure it's also just, let's secure 100% on our own merit that we're going to be sitting in that top four rather than whether or not, you know, X team could go ahead and win two games in a series. So TNC going to go into game number two, really hoping to be able to tie up this series against LGD in their final series of the group stage. We'll be back after a short break.